Right, back live with you tonight. Uh, here on In Focus, and thanks uh, for staying on. The Economic Freedom Fighters are uh, gearing up for their 10th anniversary celebration uh, in a couple of days. It's set to take place at the FNB Stadium in Nazareth on the 29th of July. EFF Treasurer General Umpila Mawajo joins us now in studio uh, for more on that. Good to have you. And uh, yeah, I haven't seen you in a while. Thanks for coming in. Good evening, Tawa. Good evening to the viewers of Newsroom. We're happy to be here. I haven't seen you in a while, of yeah, course. Yeah, absolutely. But we're Listen, happy to be here. It's great that you could come. This, as you're actually coming in, interesting that we, we <laughs> learned uh, this morning of a convention uh, of, uh, I think, six opposition parties uh, that are, are planning to unseat the ANC, DA, NFP, IFP, Action SA, uh, I forget the other one. Uh, and, and, and you're seemingly not included there. Are you at all bothered by the fact that uh, you, you didn't form part of that uh, national uh, uh, convention? We're not bothered. So Tawa, the, those are the losers, the, the so-called moon pact. Uh, it's a bunch of losers. We, we are on our own. We are going to take over. But it is good because the DA said we are enemy number one. And I, had over, I, I read um, over the weekend that the ANC also says we are enemy number one. So the two uh, parties have declared the EFF as enemy number one, purely because we stand for the people and purely because they've come to appreciate the impact of the EFF and the fact that the EFF is the future and both the two parties and all of them are actually not featuring in the future of this country. The EFF is going to take over. That's why they're not including us. Um, we're going to remove the ANC from power. Uh, that's a fact. We've removed them in many municipalities. They couldn't believe it. Um, they couldn't see it coming. And uh, today we are government in many municipalities uh, because we're gearing for government in 2024. We're going to have uh, the president of the country being Julius Silomalema, Mwanao Kukusara from Sashiho. And uh, that's what gives them sleepless nights. They can't sleep, they can't stomach the fact that there'll be um, a president from the economic freedom fighters. So we're happy you're not included in uh, the bunch of losers uh, who are planning nothing but uh, for, the, for our people uh, at least. They're not planning to do anything to improve the lives of our people. They're not planning to do anything to emancipate black people from slavery, from economic slavery. So we're on the right path. It's a good call actually to isolate us because we're on our own, we're moving, uh, our train is moving very fast, they can't <laughs> catch us up. President Israel was saying it's, it must be dreaming if you think the, the ANC will lose power uh, uh, in 2024. I mean, how do, how do you see the EFF moving from uh, a 10% uh, party to, to, to one that gets the majority of the votes? But Tavo, that's a dream of speaking himself. I mean, he's dreamed about one million houses in Alex. Today we're still waiting for them. He's dreamt about uh, uh, job creation. We're still waiting for it. He's dreamt about, uh, by the way, the first time he got into parliament, he spoke about the bullet train. I remember it very well because mm. it was meant to be um, uh, manufactured by Transnet, and I was a Transnet at that time. So he's a dreamer himself. So he can't say we are dreaming. We're taking over power. We're speaking today. We're government in many municipalities. He can't believe it himself. He still thinks it's a dream. But uh, come 2024, the people are going to show him flames. They've shown him flames from 20, uh, from actually from the beginning. The ANC only got real votes back in the days. But since the formation of the EFF in 2013, they've been on a decline, and, and a drastic decline. And they're going to continue to decline because they're not doing anything for our people. If anything, Ramaphosa is presiding today over a government of high unemployment rate, high levels of inequality, high levels of poverty. There's no hope for any of our young people to get employ employment. Our young people are loitering in the streets. They can't get access to tertiary institutions. So that's, that's a dreamer who has held their office but has done nothing for our people. Yeah. So I'm not surprised by uh, his clownish remarks. He's okay. We'll deal with him 2024. He's not a problem at all. Interesting that you, you, you're saying that, uh, I mean, uh, yes, the DF declared you enemy number one, and the ANC saying that they, they, they are coming for you, at least the ANC Youth League, that's what we're hearing this, this, this past weekend, certainly, that they're coming for that space. Uh, I'll, I'll get your views on that in just a moment. But here's where I was going with this. We are seeing a, a number of former ANC leaders, well, one could say maybe others via ATM, others via whatever, uh, who are coming in and becoming 
members of the EFF. There are rumors that uh, even uh, uh, Ace Mahashule could be uh, making a showing at your 10th anniversary. Uh, the president of the EFF saying uh, we'll be surprised. In fact, there are others, high-profile individuals, who you are in communications uh, with right now. Why, why would you, uh, as the EFF, want to go and, 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 and swim and fish in, 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 in that dirty pond, so to speak, and not raise up new, fresh leaders? No, but you see, you started correctly by saying they are coming. We are not going to them to ask them to join the EFF. We join the EFF voluntarily. No one gets recruited or gets, um, uh, you don't apply. So you, 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 it, it's your conscious decision to say, I want to join the EFF. Mm -hmm. I, I made that conscious decision to say, I want to join politics and my political home is the Economic Freedom Fighters. And so if everybody else. We are a, a democratic organization. I, our founding manifesto is very clear that we, we accept everyone. You can't say, no, we're taking this one or not taking that one. So if you apply yourself as Tabum Druli to be a member of the EFF, we'll accept you. Maybe this is your home for repentance. Maybe this is your home where you are going to change and be a better person. You'll be born again maybe if you're in the EFF. So you think you are, you're able to rehabilitate these folks? I mean, so, some of them are facing charges in court. You're swelling up, so to speak, for lack of a better word, the ranks of, of the EFF uh, with, the, with these individuals. Are you not going to turn and begin to look like the ANC? Because the more you have the likes of these people who are in the ANC coming into the EFF, the more you are becoming like what the, the ANC is. So the EFF, the center is holding. The center is one. It's at Winnemalik Zela Mandela House. That's where instructions come from. That's where decisions are made uh, by the top leadership of the organization, through instructions. So there can't be any, anyone who comes to want to change the image of the organization or wants to change the constitution of the organization or anything like that. So what we should be judged on as the EFF is, do we live up to our promises that are founded in the founding manifesto of the EFF? Do, do, do we still subscribe to the policies and the, 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 the regulations that we've put up on the funding manifesto of the EFF. Let's not individualize things. So we're an organization, we want to win power. You can't win power with two people. You've got to win power by winning society. So society will come up with all their ills and everything. But they come because they can see the light. They come because they can appreciate that. Actually, the future of this country lies in the EFF. They are not joining other parties that are dying because of obvious reasons that they are on a death path. Why would you go and join the party that is going to die tomorrow? But they come to appreciate that there can't be any future in South Africa without the EFF. And we, we really are happy that people have seen, have turned the light. Because a lot of these people, by the way, back in the days, they never believed in the EFF. They saw the EFF as a party of young people. Uh, then we started recruiting old people. Then old people came. So now who do we go to? We go to everybody across all spheres of, of society, we are on a campaign to recruit people because it is through people that you are going to get ground forces that are going to spread the ideology and the, the gospel of the EFF so that people can believe in the EFF and vote for the EFF. Unfortunately, that's how the polls work. You've got to spread your wings. You've got to go and lobby people. By the way, that's what you are doing anyway. The reason why we've got rallies is so that we can communicate the message through the rallies so that more people can come and join the EFF. We don't want to remain with one. We are sitting at one million now, one million plus. Yeah. So you can't win elections with one million plus. We want more people to come in. And we know that we've got a solid base of voters because our system can only take um, registered voters. So you are guaranteed that the more people come onto the system, those are your registered voters. So they are converted already. You are going to use them now to go and fetch other people, other registered voters, so that they can vote for EFF and then you can get the majority. Speaking of the majority, what do you make of your poor showing in the by-elections last week? People have been making a big deal about uh, you not, not showing up in, in, in those by-elections, in fact, in, in any form of significant way. People will always talk, when we win by-elections, people are not talking. When we lose by-elections, people are talking. So uh, uh, people will want to talk to discredit the economic freedom fighters. But Tabo, we, we, we are on a path. To, we are gearing up now, we are, we are celebrating our 10 years. After the 10 years, we will be now making plans to go and launch our manifesto. After our manifesto, we are going for elections. We're going, the national elections, the good thing is that all of us, we must vote. So there's not going to be any suspicion of 
Tabo be moved from point A to point B to go and vote because the voting is only happening in point B. No. All registered voters across all corners of South Africa are going to vote. Mm. And the EFF is going to do very well. Of course, we're disappointed with the outcome, the results. But um, for us, it, 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 we acknowledge that we could have done better. But we're saying that's not the end of the world. It must not be demoralized. Uh, we are gearing for victory in 2024. Yeah. Is it, is it decisive victory or are you looking at, at victory as, 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 as the DA would like to think that uh, you, you are uh, possibly going to be co-governing with the ANC in 2024 at least? So when you enter a race, you don't enter a race to become number three, number four. You enter a race because you want to win. And the people of South Africa will decide who must win. But we're going there for a win. That's why we're putting everything uh, table. Everything. We're doing everything in our power. We started... Um, planning for this 10th anniversary that is going to happen now, 29 July, that you don't want to talk about. You're talking about other things. No, we'll talk but to not <laughs> <laughs> 29 July. We started planning about it from as early as uh, January, February. Yeah. Because we take ourselves serious, we take our people serious. We want to win the elections. We want to bring the EFF to the government of this country. Because we've seen that it is possible. Remember previously they were saying, no, you don't have experience, no, you can't do it. Now we are governing, we are in municipalities. So what is left now is for the national leadership to take over the, the ranks of the highest offices in this country so that we can give our people what they are, they've been looking for. They, we've been looking for, longing for economic freedom ever since 1994. We promised false, we made pro, uh, false promises. So we've got commitments with our people, we've got commitments with the future of this country that we have to deliver to our people come 2024. All right, let's take a break. When we continue next, we'll take your thoughts as well. Our conversation uh, with uh, Umpile, and uh, you can send those through on 072-110-5584. Otherwise, you can tweet us at Newsroom405. Umpile Maote, staying with us. He's keen to talk about the 10th year anniversary. We'll get to that. There are other issues on the side as well that uh, she needs to address for us. Uh, but, of course, we'll get to talk to that uh, and other issues in a moment. Stay with us. All right, we're back live with you tonight on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. Economic Freedom Fighters are gearing up uh, for their 10th anniversary celebration, and that is taking place at the FNB Stadium. It's a party that started 10 years ago, but has now become uh, clearly the third largest opposition party uh, in the country, and they are looking to go all the way uh, to the top. So there's been some criticism, and let's talk about the, the, the 10th anniversary, around uh, you inviting uh, uh, Professor Patrick Lumumba to to, 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 the, to the 10th anniversary or celebration. Others are saying, well, he's recently come under fire around his views on anti-gay laws and so on and, and so forth. Why would you want him to come and speak? Because he's, um, he's a human being. He's got his own views. He's got his own opinion. And he must voice it. It's a, it's a democratic country, Tabo. We are clear away on our stand when it comes to LGBTQI plus community. Our founding manifesto is very clear. I mean, we marched hmm. uh, in Pretoria to the embassy yeah. of yeah, Uganda the Museum, yeah. Yeah, against yeah. that bill yeah. because we're against it and we're still against it. That's precisely why people are saying it's confusing. It's how, not, do you, it's, it's, how do you march 
Uh, you, you, you can't even stand to, to sit and listen to Sir Ramaphosa in Parliament, yet you are going to bring this human being to Do you know that that time Sir Ramaphosa and, invited and, and, the President of Uganda here, and no one is talking about it? Because why? There's no EFF involved. But just because this one has got EFF involved, now everybody's talking. People must talk. The same Ramaphosa, who is against the bill himself, invited the, the signatory of the bill here. No one, zilch, no one is talking about it. But we are inviting a professor who, in the main, most of the time, agrees with our policies, agrees with the emancipation of our African people. Now it makes a big news. <laughs> no, it's unfair, Tabo. Let's allow the man to voice his frustration. He's, he knows that where we stand when it comes to the LGBTQI plus community. He knows very clear. But we, we can't shy away from the fact that the man is a progressive man yeah. who preaches the unity of Africa, who preaches about the united Africa. Now, because he's got a different view on the LGBTQ plus community, we must slaughter the man. It's unfair. Let, let's allow him to have his opinion. He knows where we stand. We know where he stands. That's his view. But it doesn't erase the fact that the man is a progressive man. Are you hoping to convince him on his, on his view? That's, that's the whole idea. So you, you, we debate and we win each other over debates. We don't throw you away and say, because you had this view, Therefore, we are, we, are, we are erasing you. There's a lot of people that we disagreed with in the past. Yeah. But when we sit uh, on a table together and we persuade each other, then they start to say, oh, okay, maybe I was wrong about this. Now I understand your view. Now I understand where you stand. And perhaps I can change my view as well. We ought to be very patient with each other. We ought to carry each other by the hand and persuade each other until we are convinced that both of us were on the same page. But until then, let's not slaughter the man. It's, it's unfair, really, on an African man who preaches about the unity of Africa, something that the West would not want to see the light of day of it happening. But just because he's got a different view on the bill, therefore, the man must be slaughtered. We don't agree. Now, again, 10-year-old party uh, uh, started uh, uh, and, uh, and seemingly growing. And there's a debate, particularly around... Um, uh, we saw this weekend whether or not uh, uh, your president should be invited to the to the BRICS summit and they uh, should be participating in that BRICS summit. But what do you make of, of, of that debate? Is he bothered at all about the fact that the ANC is, is, is divided on, on, on whether or not he should be a part of that, uh, considering, of course, his views on open borders and, and, and what he thinks particularly around the unity of Africa? So we're not surprised, and he's not surprised himself. I mean, possibly there are the people who did not want him to speak at Mama Winnie Madik Zala Mandela's funeral, by the way. The ANC, the, those that were delegated with planning and preparations for Mama Winnie's funeral, did not want him until Mama uh, Zenani, Zinzi, said, go and prepare a speech, you're going to speak. So we're not surprised at all. Those are goggles who don't appreciate the fact that the BRICS, needs all of us. It needs a buy-in from everybody across the society. We are part of the society. We are South Africa. We are citizens. We play a critical role in this country, not only in the EFF structures, but even continentally and globally. So you can't ignore that fact. I mean, the people who are talking, they've been ministers for many, many years. But if we can check their profile internationally, compared to Julius Malema, the president, it's nothing. They are not known. Because they are not progressive like that. So you can't stop a leader who is born to lead. Unfortunately, you can't. So President Julius Malema is, is born to lead. And Naledi Pando and um, Lindiwe Zulu, people don't even know them, despite the fact that they've occupied national positions for a very long time as ministers. Go out to any African country and ask them, do you know Naledi Pando, Just despite the fact that he's a minister even worse of international relations. Lindy do you not? No, we don't. Because they don't add value. So those are the people that think that it's okay for them to deny a leader who will have progressive ideas, who played a critical role, by the way, in making sure, in debates within the ANC at that time, to make sure that we form part of the BRICS. Today they want to shut him out. The world is watching. We're just warning the ANC that the world is watching. And they don't agree with what you are doing. And it's very wrong for the ANC to take platform and want to use, because they, now they are the governing party, they can decide who must come in, who must not come in. It's wrong. 
Let's set our political differences aside. And let's say for the future of this country, for the future of this continent, let's join hands together and work together. Because that's what we want through the uh, BRICS platform. But to deny a person to go and contribute is very wrong. Let's talk about the other elephant in the room, and I've seen your statement on it. Uh, certainly, you're rejecting the report of the acting public protector. Uh, on what grounds? Uh, you, you, you what yourselves. a joke. What a joke. Yeah. What a joke she is. She's making herself a joke. Like, so she says the president took the platform and said that he had money. The money was stolen. Then the PP says, no, there's no evidence of that. Like, da. It's a, it's a shame, more so that she's an African woman. Really, she can do better. She doesn't have to be this desperate to just ignore the law like that. Let's disagree, Tabo. Let's, let's, let's disagree. But when the law is there and the law is before you, judge according to the law. We submitted, we made submissions to the um, um, uh, Section 89 independent panel. Did she even visit, bother to visit that? Because that should have been the, the first point of call to say, there's a report that has been issued. Let me have a look at this report that says that there is possibly a prima facie evidence and therefore the president has to answer. I don't think she did because if she, if she did, she would have come to a different conclusion. But it's said that it's an African woman who's yeah. been used like this. But if, if you're placing so much authority on that uh, Section 89 report, how come there is... No, not party, I'm, at least maybe I'm, I could be wrong, who are actually challenging that decision of the ANC to, to block that Section 89? No, we are. We are. Yeah. The ATM is. Yeah. Uh, remember the President, why the, the, the Parliament did not um, continue with the establishment of the committee was that the President said he's challenging the report. He actually took it to court. And that's why the members of the ANC voted against the establishment of the Section 89 committee on the basis that the president is challenging, therefore let's wait for the outcome of the challenge. Yeah. Then the president withdrew. Yeah. So there's nothing that stands on the way. We wrote letters to the speaker to say, Speaker, you are relying on the court outcome. The court outcome is not going to come anyway because the matter has now been withdrawn. So that argument, that reasoning of saying we are not voting for this establishment because we're waiting for the court outcome doesn't stand, doesn't hold water anymore. Therefore, please established. She didn't. So we then spoke to our lawyers. We filed papers. It's coming to court. And the ATM did. The UDM did. I think it's as far as I remember. And um, I think the DA also um, is it's, it's some way, somehow, it's tend to be corrected. But I think the DA also is challenging it. So we as members of parliament, uh, political parties in parliament, representatives in parliament, were challenging it because it's unfair. It's, 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 it's illegal. He used, he lied to his own caucus so that they can vote for him, for him to then um, withdraw the case. So it's very wrong. Yeah. Well, they've come out once again, and they've received uh, the uh, public protector's report with applause, the acting public protector. They said they stand by their president. Are you surprised? So if I'm you saying to your point, you're saying he lied to them. They don't seem to think he lied to them. Yeah, so we're going to challenge it as well. We, we, we are busy talking to the lawyers. I don't, I don't think we should be surprised. I mean, these are the people who just came out of the conference who just voted for Ramaphosa. Um, um, a majority of them, they are still, you know, it's a stomach politics. They still want to keep their jobs. It's the SG of the ANC who said that. Uh, he's singing for Sapa. We all know that. Um, but, yeah, it, it, we're not surprised at all because they are in this thing to protect their president, not to protect the constitution of this. They've got no regard for the constitution of this country. They've got no regard for the people of this country because then you and I, Tabo, should have stacks and stacks of dollars in our houses. And for as long as the cameras are not from neighbors, like the PPC, say, then there's nothing wrong. So it's very wrong. I mean, over the weekend, we were told about the hawks that went to arrest a, a person in Limpopo yes. for having 1.9 million. Yes. Why are you blaming her or him? Why? Because the president did the same thing. And he confessed that, yes, there was that money in his house. There was that money that was stolen. Well, you confessed com it. Completely out of time. I appreciate you. Thank you very much for coming. We have not spoken about the 10 years. Anyway, we're inviting <laughs> everybody to come to <laughs> FNB on the 29th of July, yeah. including you, Tabo. Come and yeah. set up your studio. Be with us. We're celebrating 10 years of unbroken struggle of economic freedom in our lifetime. Appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. That's uh, Pilamov. I'll be back in a moment with your headlines.